Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor. One very show that's for you, those of you who work so freaking hard for your money. You want your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom and cash flow today, not 30 or 40 years from now, but right now, so you can live that life that you love doing what you love. But guys, it's not just about getting rich, is it? It's about living a rich life because as you're blessed financially, you have a greater capacity to bless the lives of others. Guys, I cannot thank you enough. Not only the fact that you guys have been binging and tuning in and everything else, but this really allows me to create a ripple effect through your guys' lives. So again, thank you for being a part of this show. You guys seriously are the best. Love having you here. Reminder as always, go to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet. Go to our Money Ripples shorts page. Also subscribe to that if you want those short little tidbits of 30 to 60 second little bits of information. So go check that out now. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, guys, so I've got a uh, little two-for special. Now, if this weren't airing on a Friday, I would say two-for Tuesday, but sorry, it's not that. Uh, but I got a special of two guests here. Uh, this is a really awesome opportunity. Uh, as you guys know, when I bring on guests, like I want the real deal. I don't want just the posers. You know, I want people that are actually legit. And uh, and I guarantee with these guys, you've probably heard of them. If, you, if you've been anywhere in the podcasting world, you probably have heard at least one, if not both of these guys already. And so I'm bringing on both Pat Flynn and I'm bringing on Matt Garland as well. Um, now, just to kind of give you an intro on both of these guys, right? Both these guys are angel investors and in companies, you know, companies like, you know, Circle, you know, you got like Carrot and Maven and, and things like that. Um, also, you know, you have Pat Flynn, who's a podcaster, he's a keynote speaker, you know, he's done lots of presentations that way. Uh, heck, if you haven't checked out his podcast, Ask Pat, you know, you've got that as well. Um, we've got Matt here, who's, you know, had multiple startups and been a venture CEO, done a lot of stuff, co-founded so many businesses, including the one we're going to talk about today, which is called SPI, as in uh, Sierra Papa Investor, right? Um, we're going to talk about that today um, because for you guys, I know many of you are wondering, what can I do to start generating more income now? And maybe you don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars lying around, but what if you could start to generate additional streams of income that can help boost this up and accelerate your way to financial independence. And that's exactly what Matt and Pat are here to do today. And Matt and Pat, I didn't realize that you guys rhyme right there, but that's kind of cool. So uh, anyways, welcome to our show, guys. Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to start asking, of course, you know, like, what is it you guys have got up to? Like, tell us what SPI is. Yeah, I mean, I'll start since I kind of uh, founded the company back in 2008 and actually came as a result of getting laid off. I thought I was going to be an architect and work nine to five. Actually, in fact, architects work more like nine to nine every day. Um, but I got laid, laid off and I didn't really know what I was going to do to survive. I moved back in with my parents trying to figure things out. And I ended up starting an online business helping architects pass a particular exam. And I had done that because I heard on another podcast. This is you talk about ripple effects. I mean, the ripples keep going and podcasting is a great way to do that. Um, I had heard a podcast where a guy was making six figures a year helping people pass the project management exam. And I was like, no way, this is crazy. I've taken a lot of exams on my way to be, uh, becoming an architect. Maybe I can choose one and become the go-to resource for that for people online. And so that's what I did. I chose a very niched exam called the lead exam and I built a website and I created a study guide. And I remember in October of 2008, I sold that study guide. It was just a PDF. Again, I had no idea what I was doing. I sold it online for $19.99. And I had made $7,908.55 that month. And it it just wow. completely changed my life. Um, I didn't think it was real. I thought I was going to wake up and not just be back at work. But nope, lo and behold, it was an absolutely uh, real thing. And the income continued to grow. And then more people started to catch wind of what I was doing and said, Pat, how did you do that? Can you show me what you did? And I said, well, I don't know what I'm doing, but I can share what I did. And just you can follow along if you'd like. You know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm the expert here, but Sure. And so I started to document what I was doing. And then I started building new businesses. I started an iPhone app company back in 09. I started podcasting in 2010 and YouTube a little bit later, started writing books. And lo and behold, uh, SPI, which was uh, me at the start, has now uh, gained this amazing team. Matt, now CEO of the company, 
uh, to help people all around the world take the knowledge that they have and whatever specialty that they perhaps have had as a result of their experience and package it in a way that allows them to, A, yes, generate revenue. So, you know, a lot of these investments that I'm sure you talk about on uh, the show here do take quite a lot of time, you know, and imagine if you had an asset like a business that was paying you uh, monthly and and not taking too much work. I mean, there's no such thing as 100% passive income in this world, but there is such thing as setting things up to continue to pay you later and ongoing, uh, sort of like residual income. And, and that's what we help people do. We've had millions of people come across our work and, and, and uh, follow us uh, across the podcast and YouTube channels. And it's just been such a blessing because we can help people and we get thank yous all the time. And, and we're here to just continue those ripple effects uh, and then Matt came on board in, I think, 2014 to help uh, really organize and structure the team and, and, and really start to amplify what we were doing. Matt, you want to talk about how you've uh, taken the message to the next level? Yeah, it was fantastic to get plugged in around the five-year mark with Pat, you know, in his journey after starting SPI. And he and I first hooked up just through some friends and it was on a contract basis, which is still a really great way for anyone thinking about you know, side income or stuff like that, right, is to to even like tap into a speciality of yourself, you know, on the service side, get some exposure, uh, expand your network in a certain new field, right? So I had just started one of my new ventures. Uh, it became a creative agency and Pat was one of our first clients and uh, became one of our best uh, and most loved over time. So that was that first project with Pat's uh, Let Go Memoir, which is still a really great read. You can find that on Amazon. And our relationship just kind of grew and bloomed from there. Um, and maybe much like one of our favorite kind of superhero movies these days, you know, fast forward about four or five years from that first kind of project together, we formally teamed up uh, around like 2018, uh, at, at the end of 2018, going into 2019, because we wanted to serve more people. Uh, we wanted to be able to engage with them more deeply uh, in such things as uh, communities uh, and not just like a, like a Facebook group community, but like an actual membership based program. Um, that people join, uh, we show up, we do private events, uh, we have some structured programming, you know, through those communities. So being able to do that, you know, was a, just a marvelous opportunity. Uh, and we had to kind of, you know, tie the knot, so to speak, to, to, to bring that to life. Oh, I love it, man. Now tell us, I mean, how, how did you even get connected with Pat here? Cause I know you've got a pretty extensive experience in business as well. Like what was your story leading up to this? Yeah, it, it kind of mirrored Pat's a, a little bit. I, I didn't lose my job in a great recession, but I was certainly under some pressure. I was in corporate IT and had a really great leadership track there. But it kind of, you know, during that era kind of makes you challenge your thinking on just like, you know, what's the biggest impact you're making with your work, right? And yeah. I was always that kid with like a lemonade stand and, and doing entrepreneurial things. So I kind of always had that in me. So it was around that time where, where I made the choice uh, proactively to, to leave, you know, a pretty cushy job, honestly. Uh, and, and to get into start, startups, it just kind of felt like the right moment. So I was bootstrapping my own thing. I didn't raise any money, you know, not even from like friends and family. It was just like I had a little bit of savings because I, I had, you know, a pretty solid nine to five. And then I just rolled that into good work. Uh, and then it's all about relationships. So uh, it was through some mutual contacts uh, back when things were called like the blogosphere, you know, uh, uh, mm -hmm. kind of more the early days of all of this stuff. So. Uh, a good friend uh, of ours, Adam, um, who now runs the show at nerdfitness.com, connected us for that first project and you know, kind of the rest is history. I love it. So what's uh, so a lot of times when we talk about the show, we talk about passive income and we're talking about like, you know, putting your money in like alternative investments, like real estate investing and things like that with other operators so you can be hands off. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this includes some hands on, but I love this because I know from my own experience too, like in addition to my passive income, have a residual income to help really enhance all of that. And also it allows you to reinvest and do more things and accelerate that, that plan. It's huge. And so um, tell us more, like really like what are ways people are able to really monetize this? Yeah, there's a number of different ways to go about it. I, in fact, outline a bunch of different ways in my book, Will It Fly? For those who are just starting out. But really what it comes down to is, and what is most popular now, especially in the creator age, is to um, select a niche, essentially, or, mar or, or a target market, a group of people who you know that you want to serve in some way, and yeah. start just helping them. Create content that allows people to see that you, A, can re relate to them and know what they're going through, but B, also have some helpful, valuable content. This is how you get fans and followers and subscribers. And it's not like you're doing this necessarily with knowing that you're going to charge those people with something, but really it's just about gathering those people together so that you can understand more about their problems because that's where all good yeah. businesses come from is solving problems. So once you gather that audience and you know it can be very difficult to do that up front, but the truth is 
your vibe attracts your tribe. When you put yourself out there and you say, hey, this is what I believe in, this is what I'm for, and this is what I'm trying to help you with, people will come to you, right? And getting on platforms like YouTube and here you are on a podcast doing something similar and now there's also TikTok, Instagram. A common question I get is, should I be on all those platforms? The truth is I think you just need to be on one or two because if you spread your energy across all of them, you're never gonna fully show up anywhere. And people wanna go to a person who they can see is providing consistent content with uh, who they can subscribe to. But then you can start having conversations with those people. In fact, bringing them into a direct message uh, situation where you can ask them like, hey, what are your biggest struggles right now? What are your biggest challenges? You might find that you actually have experience to help solve those pro uh, problems. Or if you don't, you can actually be the one to step up to find people or find those resources or find those products to serve those people. And that's again, where it comes from. And so a lot of people who are starting these things on the side, side hustles, side businesses, think that you have to go big and you know create the next Uber, or create the next eBay or wh whatever it might be. You can start yeah. small, pick one group of people and try to find one person who has one problem and solve that problem. You don't even n need a website in order to do that. You just need to care. Right. And that alone will force you to understand, well, how do you relate to these people? How do you get them to understand what you have to help them with? How do you help them? And then once you get that result for that one person, again, just, just one to start out with, not only do you have this great testimonial and some proof that you can do this, but you have now confidence to go out there and start talking about this on a more wide level. And then the income comes from, well, maybe you wanna help many people in that same way. So you create a, uh, a an online course or a group coaching program, or maybe you now become a consultant or, or a freelancer like what Matt was talking about. Or perhaps you have an idea for a software that can help automate something that is normally very difficult and takes a lot of people a lot of time. I know a person who was in the, um, they were in the home inspection space, right, for, for real estate. And they used to go around and have clipboards to kind of do everything. So he created an iPad app that allowed uh, people uh, who did these agents uh, or these agents who would go out and, and do these inspections to just do it all on an iPad and automatically format and save things. And it would save a ton of time. People pay like yeah. $50 a month to get access to that. And if you might multiply $50 a month times, you know, just a hundred people in this world of 8 billion, I mean, you're living pretty good and imagine an extra, you know, $5,000 $5, a, a month coming in. Like that could be game changing. Absolutely. Hopefully you Ripplers, you're, you're listening to this right now because one thing that they, they've just pretty much said the same principle that I keep driving into your heads every time, which is even when we're talking about investing and cash flow and passive income, that's all important. But ultimately the real economic principle here is that dollars follow value, right? How do you mm -hmm. show up to serve people, solve problems and create value or add value in any way, shape or form that people want to exchange money with you. And that's, that's the formula. That's a secret formula that it sadly took me several years of being a financial advisor to finally learn and quit being a financial advisor to finally do it right. And then kind of go in this space, you know, and, and even in the time when I went in the hole over a million dollars, you know, and in the last recession, so where you guys kind of had your own thing, I went over a million dollars after being financially independent, went over a million dollars in debt, had to dig my way back out of that without mm. going bankrupt. And uh, it was a sucky position, but I had to teach the things that created value at that time. So I stopped teaching people how to get out of the rat race because I was in it. I instead start teaching people how to find and free up cash, right? Like, where do you find the money? Because people would always ask me that time during the recession, well, I'd love to pay you, Chris, but I just can't find the money. And I'm thinking, well, I'm broke, way more broke than they are. I wouldn't say it out loud to them, but I'm like, I'm way more broke than you guys are. Like, I could find the money easily in your situation. So I'd say, if I can find the money, would you pay me? Yeah, great. And then done, you know, and they would start paying me. So you guys are essentially kind of telling people to do the same thing just in their own little area of expertise with the people they want to serve, matching that up and delivering whatever it is. It doesn't have to be a certain widget. It's whatever comes out of you expressively. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, one way that we teach this and enhance it ourselves uh, through our work at SPI is just classic advocacy, right? Like if you can help even one person or, or, or 10 people in a small group, and really deliver that value, you know, that value manifests as, you know, these are now, you know, loyal, not only fans, but customers, right? And then they can yeah. tell your story for you in a very genuine way. So even thinking back to, uh, you know, freelance or other kind of service opportunities that can generate income, maybe in the early days, right? Maybe mm -hmm. because you want to get into online courses or, or these other things that are a bit more scalable and passive uh, at some point, but you want to bootstrap it, right? You know, that, that service work can be that little engine that does that. And I kind of think about this as like the you know powers of 10 strategy. It's not you know overly complex, but like if you can get just 10 people right in a 
you know, little service capacity, you're, you're offering uh, a skill, right, you know, for service for dollars, you can then roll not only the income, but those testimonials and those opportunities into then like the next thing, because you get some validation built into how you are solving their problems. And then like the next thing is maybe like a small group coaching or something that's a little more expansive. So that's like 100 people out from 10. And then you get even more experience, you get more testimonials, you can maybe at that point have a podcast and other things running. And then you can maybe start thinking about that next level, you know, that next power 10 up, which is that super fans, which is Pat's book, uh, you know, hunt or a thousand true fans, right? And kind of going after that tier. Yeah, yeah that, that's the, the, the thousand true fans thing, Chris, is, is, is so key for people who are yeah. just thinking about this because – uh, there was an article written in 2006 that really inspired me when I first started. It was, it was written by the senior editor of Wired Magazine. His name is Kevin Kelly, and it was this article called A Thousand True Fans. And it was for mainly musicians and artists and, and, and people like that, but entrepreneurs are fitting into this category as well. And, and the idea is you, know, you don't need a blockbuster hit. You don't need to serve millions of people, and you don't need to change the whole world. If you can, awesome. But the truth is if you want to have something really amazing that can support a lifestyle that you want and help you collect even more money to invest in to start to expand things in over time, you just need a 1,000 true fans because if you had a 1,000 true fans, a true fan being – for a musician, the person who like waits backstage to snap a selfie with you, or if you have products, they don't even read the sales page, they just buy it because they love you so much and, and your art and your craft. If you get a thousand of those people paying you a hundred dollars a year, that's less than ten dollars a month. I mean, a lot of us spend a hundred dollars a month on things we don't even use. So this is like True. very generous, like low balling it, right? Uh, so a hundred dollars a year times a thousand people. You have, you're running a six-figure business already. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more taxes, like w whatever. But just from a general bird's eye perspective, it's not yeah. that difficult. And where most people fail is they try to go too big too quick. So as I often say, the riches are in the niches. Even though I know it's pronounced niches, it sounds better this way. The riches are in the niches. And so niche down, find those yeah. few people, like Matt said, help them. And then you can expand how you help them. Maybe maybe the help is actually on a more deeper level where people are coming and flying over to you to have you show them what to do or you're flying to them, in which case you could charge more. Maybe it's not 1,000 people. Maybe it's 10 people, but you charge yeah. them $10,000 to help to, to get whatever it is your, your specialty is and access that. So it's just hopefully yeah. encouraging. And Because when I heard that, I was like, wow, I don't need to create something huge. I just need to change somebody's world. And there's a few other people like that too. I could probably help. Yeah. And you just support something that Matt said too, that I think is really important because, you know, uh, like as he started going through like, Hey, you can do it this way. Like you start here and then you build this to here and you build this to here. Like, you notice like a podcast or whatever was like down the road where I've heard so many people, they'll ask me, Chris, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should start a podcast. I don't really have any followers. I have a few Facebook friends, but I think I always want to start a podcast right now. And, uh, or maybe I want to put on a live events and I'm like, well, first get a following, you know, like build this first, like start to test out what you're doing, not just teach something that you've never done before. Just, you know, there's a certain order to it. There's a certain priority of what you start doing first. And I'm kind of mm -hmm. hearing that from both of you guys. For sure. Um, I mean, you can start with a podcast. Many people do, but that's, mm -hmm. you have to set the right expectations. If you have no idea sort of where you're going, you can start a podcast and use that as an experimental ground, a testing ground, but you have right. to have the expectation that, it's going to take a little bit longer because you haven't nailed that message and who it is you're serving it. And that's totally fine. Many right. people do that. But like Matt said, and what, what I'm a proponent of is find a group of people, talk to them, understand them. What are their struggles? Then yeah. imagine how much easier it is going to be to start a podcast and know what to say when you already know who that group of people is. Right. So. That's right. Yeah. A, a really important thing here, Chris, is that, you know, especially these days with kind of where the tech is in the creator space, there absolutely is not a one size fits all path. Right. It doesn't, mm -hmm. you don't have to start with freelance. You don't have to start with podcasting. There, there isn't, it's not that linear. Right. So, like, we'll, yeah. as we teach it and, and try to genuinely live it in our community, especially, is it's a sort of choose your own adventure. Right. Like, there are proven mm -hmm. methods and, and, and being goal oriented, even like small goals that can build momentum and can start to instill the right habits in your work. Like, you know, these, these are like the real kind of nuts and the bolts of how to make a business work. But, you know, in terms of your decision-making and where you want to focus, like we try to champion a lot of that, you know, build your own path, you know, and, and build a business on your own terms. Uh, so even like in our learner community, for example, you know, it's, it's our kind of open access community. It's only like $29 a month. And we invite people to come in and learn the ropes on this stuff so that they can make the best decisions possible in the right sequence for them. 
Great. And what's and how would they get access to that community? Folks could go learn more about it at smartpassiveincome.com forward slash community. Uh, when you go to our community page, you'll learn actually about not only our, our learner community, which is for probably folks listening to this that are kind of just getting really excited about kind of a, you know, their own venture um, with our pro community. Uh, we have another community called SPI Pro. That's for, you know, folks that are probably a little more established in their business are working on more advanced methods. Um, the pro community is actually application-based. You have to apply. Uh, it's one of our just mm. kind of quality control mechanisms. But our learner community, anyone is welcome. doesn't matter what uh, niche you're in. doesn't matter where you are in the world. You know, we are a global audience and we are here, we are here to help people learn the ropes of entrepreneurship. I love it. I also know you guys have a newsletter too, correct? Yeah, the newsletter, uh, which is fairly new actually, is called Unstuck. And so you could get unstuck by getting the newsletter. And what it is, it's really stories about entrepreneurship, uh, mostly from my perspective as an entrepreneur now for almost 12 years or 13, 14, 14 I don't know, I'm an old person now. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of times the, the, the thing that can help us move forward the most are these small little moments. And so I wanted to bring these moments out and share them and teach story without overwhelming people. So if you wanted to get that newsletter, you can go to uh, smartpassiveincome.com slash unstuck. That's where you get unstuck. And, um, you know, there's some some of my personality shows up in there as well. A lot of dad jokes and, you know, <laughs> quotes and other things like that too, which which are always fun. So I love it. That's great. Well, I want to ask you guys a question as well. Just kind of go a little bit deeper, but more personal with you too. Because, I mean, I know like Matt, I know you've been a successful entrepreneur and done a lot in, in, in with lots of businesses, including this one that you guys are doing as well. Pat, I mean, I know you've done done great. I mean, you've even had a podcast that has affected, I mean, I know people that, like John Lee Dumas, that attributes his inspiration to you, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and he's got a great community as well. And I know, how I can't tell you how many people have told me, oh yeah, I look at John Lee Dumas or Pat Flynn and, and they all look up to you that way. You know, for you and your business and your experience, you know, what is that you feel that most people are missing? You know, especially if they're trying to, launch something as new entrepreneurs, or if they're trying to create a side hustle, what is it you've really seen in your own experience that if people just got this one thing, it would probably just, it would probably make their lives so much easier. Mm. Matt, do you want to start? Yeah, happy to. Uh, I would say at some point in that person's journey, probably not at the front, is mm -hmm. to truly understand your own core motivations. Uh, and that might sound kind of like heady, uh, but oftentimes what I have seen is that, you know, other people are chasing someone else's version of the dream or, the, so or what success looks like. Right. And yeah. what we have learned, especially together, Pat and I, over the years of working together and just becoming like best friends and close friends and our families know each other, all that is, you know, we're extremely complimentary, but we still share, uh, complimentary motivations that are different. Right. And we've actually gone through formal, it's almost like a personality assessment sort of thing to understand mm -hmm. like how Pat's motivated, how I'm motivated. We work really well together, but there's some differences there to really understand how we can really channel and be our best selves in our work. And I think a lot of people maybe don't fully understand that because they're just, they're seeing the representation of success through JLD mm -hmm. or, or Pat or someone else. And that's really motiv motivating on the inspiration side on the front end to get started. But along the way, I think really kind of dialing in, okay, what is really underneath the hood for you and being able to make sure that that's connected with your work is the biggest thing that I would say. That's Love really it. good, Matt. Uh, there's a book uh, by uh, a friend of ours, Todd Henry, called The Motivation Code, which if that is of interest to you, you could take it um, and, and, and run with it because it, it, it has opened up my eyes to a lot of things about myself and Matt and our other team members. Um, from my perspective, this is the thing that I struggled with the most when I first started was – there was something in me that made me want to do everything myself, right? And mm. I wanted to have my name on all parts of it. I wore all the hats and I was really proud of that. And sometimes you have to do that, especially if you're bootstrapping and you're just starting out. Mm. But I think I held on to that way too long. I don't know if it was a sense of pride or just the fact that maybe I was just, hey, nobody could do this as good as I can, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, like with the podcast, I was doing the podcast, the artwork, the show notes, the, the editing of it for like seven years straight all because I didn't think anybody could do it as well or as fast as me. But what I found out was that there's other people out there who can do these things much better, much faster. And there are many things that I just, you know, as a business owner, you kind of have to do that, you know, are part of the the, the role. Um, there's people, and, and a lot of that you just don't want to do, like the, the the financials and all the tax related stuff, it just like gives me a headache. I, I, I mm -hmm. don't like doing that stuff because I want to focus on creation and building relationships and, 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 and connecting with people. 
there are people out there who love doing those things like Matt. And this is why Matt and I work very well together. Um, and so I'm not saying you need to hand off and start hiring people right away. In fact, many people yeah. make that mistake. But I think eventually get to the point where when you're starting to fit, find that you, you, you as you're working want to do more of this, but you still have to do more of that, that's a good sign to go, okay, well, what one or two things could I potentially hand off or um, systemize in some way or, or bring a virtual assistant on for? Um, that would have that would have exponentially grown my business and results much, much faster if I was more open to that sooner. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, I was in that same boat where, you know, it was the Chris Miles Money Show instead of the Money Ripples podcast, right? And and I was doing my first five seasons all by myself. And, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, once I got to seven figures, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm doing this and I don't have anybody support me here. How's this going to scale? You really can't, you know, it's really right. hard to do that. So it's, you know, it's, it's very, very wise. I wish I had learned that even faster because I probably mm -hmm. would have been a different place even today. So great stuff. Well, guys, I, I really appreciate it. Like, uh, this has been amazing. Um, but I'll probably end up having to figure out what I need to do with you guys firstly, just to see how you can build that community. Cause I mean, I tell you like, that's the thing we, love our community, but we can always do better. We can always connect even though we have one currently. So uh, anyways, uh, appreciate your time guys. Thank you. Thank Chris. you so much, Chris. Thanks to the Ripplers. Keep going. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everybody else, you heard it. I mean, like it's one thing to hear these podcasts, another thing to do them, right? You're going to be here or you're going to be a doer of the word guys. You know, if this resonates with you, check out their newsletter, go check out their, you know, go check out their, their site, you know, just check out SPI and see what they've got there. Because uh, whether you're just starting out or you're a pro, right? There's there's something for everybody, and there's always a next level, a next way to learn. And you know what? And I'll tell you, just from knowing these two guys, there's not anybody you could really be learning from it better. I mean, anybody else that says that they're doing their kind of stuff out there, of trying to help you build communities, these guys have actually lived it and done it. And like I said, we don't just bring on posers and people that talk a big game, but these guys have actually walked a very, very big game. So go check out their stuff. Go and make it a wonderful and prosperous week. We'll see you later.